McDonald's, by the way, the worst performer on the Dow today after Citi issued a 90-day negative catalyst watch on the stock. Currency headwinds, weakening economic conditions in Europe seen as two reasons to get cautious. The analyst that made that call, Citi's John Tower, joined us now. John, great to have you with us. It, it's not often that an analyst makes a 90-day call here. So what do you think is going to transpire in 90 days? And how do those negative catalysts get resolved at the end of the window? Yeah, so the 90-day catalyst watch is really just the street coming around and investors coming around to the idea that the operating environment for the, the brand in Europe is going to become more challenging, not only from a top-line standpoint, but also on a bottom-line standpoint. And I think the CEO even alluded to this about two weeks ago at a conference in Chicago. On top of the fact that FX headwinds are not necessarily being accounted for correctly in street estimates today, and we think come the third quarter earnings call after that street will likely readjust their numbers a little bit lower going forward and better reflect really the FX headwinds and the, the operating environment that's about to come uh, in Europe for, for the brand. And the reason we call out McDonald's here is the fact that they do have greater operating exposure to that market relative to any of the other brands in our universe. So it's mm -hmm. calling that out. Go ahead. Um, in Europe, do you see what are the, the major forces in terms of headwinds in Europe? Is it is it uh, consumer demand waning? Is it inflationary pressures um, whittling away at margins there, the inability to raise price as fast as inflation? Yeah, it's all of the above. I, I mean, the company's going to take as much price as they can while still trying to promote the value message. But I think a, an important piece of the research that we did today is taking a look at how the brand is positioned in those markets relative to other limited service chains and independents. And unlike the United States, where they hold a fairly significant value position in Europe, um, across many of the markets, they don't have that same type of price positioning uh, relative to the consumer or relative to other competitors in the market. So we think there's a little bit of risk on that end. But to your point, rising energy prices are likely going to crimp consumer spend. On top of that, the company does have greater operating exposure in the market, so their own stores are likely going to feel more pressure on the their own margins in that market, and therefore profits are likely going to slip a little bit going forward. That doesn't appear to be reflected in street numbers today. Looking at the numbers uh, for 23, the streets essentially suggesting there's going to be a step up of 300 to 400 basis points for same-store sales growth. And all the inputs that we're seeing regarding consumer demand across many of the major markets in Europe suggests that things are rolling over now and likely going to start worsening as the winter months come along. Hmm. Um, what's your outlook on when it comes to Asia? We heard earlier this week, or maybe it was late last week, that, that McDonald's raised prices in Japan because of inflationary pressures and, and labor costs. Um, what are you seeing in, in that area of the world, and how does that um, pose any sort of a drag on the quarter? Yeah, for McDonald's itself, because of their ownership, structure, they've got less operating exposure in Asia than, say, some of the other brands that we follow, uh, for example, Starbucks. Um, but taking price, considering it's it's mostly a franchise business model, is actually a good thing for uh, McDonald's profit, assuming you don't see a significant slip in traffic or, or demand in a market where they're taking price. But, you know, Asia, including China, still recovering from a lot of the COVID challenges. Uh, China itself still in the process of, of reopening or still has the, the zero COVID policy going on, which is likely impacting demand into the third quarter. Until that gets resolved, we won't get a better idea as to what normalized demand will look like going forward. And across the rest of Asia, we're hearing kind of mixed bag in terms of performance due to COVID-related restrictions um, across many different markets. Last quick question, John. That is a 90-day trading call takes you through the end of the year. Um, does that mean next year looks a lot better for McDonald's? Well, no. I mean, investors typically discount 12, 24 months out. And what we're trying to do is just point out the fact that next year's numbers still need to move a little bit lower, at least from a street standpoint. Investors need to really digest what's happened with FX and what's likely going to happen with demand. So once they do and investors get more comfortable with it and the multiple re-rates, first the numbers come down and the multiple moves a little bit lower, I think that's when uh, people come back to this from a defensive standpoint and start looking at the, the stock again. But right now, it just looks like with earnings risk and the stock near multi-year highs from an absolute and relative mm -hmm. basis on valuation, it's hard to see a lot more upside in the near term. All right. John, thanks for your thoughts. Appreciate it.